as an athlete, I'm extremely hungry. I'm not in this sport to get rich, I'm in the sport to be the best in the world. I am super passionate for the sport. Last year I really felt like I could have been top 10 ranked in the world. I really believe that I'm a better athlete than I guess what I've shown on paper. I just want to be the best athlete that I can be. The young Carl Smith I see now is a far more mature athlete both on and off the race course. I'm the king, you're the killer. I'm coming up like a winner. Oh, oh Kyle. Kyle Smith is one of the new generation of weapons as well. He's just strong across the board. Triathlon is a sport where hard work is rewarded. Um, it's a brutal sport. Um, we're training more than 30 hours a week and it's almost a sport where the more you put into it, the more you get out of it, unlike some other sports where talent kind of prevails a lot more. Everyone always talks about the sacrifice that they have to make to get into a sport, but it wasn't really a sacrifice. I chose a life. I chose triathlon. I chose my life to go down that avenue. I remember going through uni, working a full-time job, doing uni, trying to you know, do triathlon as well. I'd wake up at 4.30 in the morning and then go to bed at nine o'clock at night and I'd just be out the whole day trying to train. I really feel like everyone needs something in their life to give them fulfillment and this is what I do. I couldn't see myself doing any other job than this. Back in the 2020, 2021, the racing was going super good in the New Zealand season. I think I won, I think I did seven races and won six on. The other one was like my first Ironman, which is pretty cool. Coming into this year, I was feeling really good, you know, like I was, I had a pretty good result in Lanzarote. Wasn't the result that I wanted to have, like I was in really good form and then in St. George, it was kind of like one of those things that's like just off. Edmonton then kind of was like that glimmer of hope that kind of showed me like, it was a horrible run into Edmonton, but then I still had like, I came off the bike close to the front after a horrendous bike and then, you know, the run was terrible, but weirdly in that I took confidence from it. I really feel like my swim and my bike is world class, but now I've got to improve the run. And so now it's going to be really working on that, working on myself, working on my running and just d committing to developing myself as an athlete and just accepting that maybe I won't be world class yet in the next two, three months. But if I commit to being world class in the next two years, the next three years, that's what I'm going to do. When I got into triathlon, uh, we moved to Taupo in New Zealand um, and that was the triathlon capital of New Zealand and you couldn't move for triathlon. And uh, I thought, ah, oh, this is what I really want to do, um, get into it. So my parents actually went out and bought me what I thought was the coolest bike ever, an aluminium Avanti. I thought it was the bee's knees. I did my first triathlon in Taupo. It was just a local club triathlon. I was 12 years old and I managed to win the race. and beat all the adults, which was a super cool feeling. Since that day, I've never looked back. Having some good junior results through school and making national teams, going to world champs and stuff like that was super cool. I just craved more and more of that and trying to get to be the world's best athlete. The story about me getting to long course was like totally by accident. It was a 70.3 in my hometown, Taupo. I come off world champs. I was the best performing New Zealander across everyone at the world champs. And then I got dropped by the program. It was literally like, I don't understand this. Like it felt just kind of like unjust. It felt kind of personal. 
and then I was going through like a pretty hard breakup and stuff at the time and it was quite like quite rough and I just needed something to pull myself into and there was Tapo 70.3 it's like in my hometown I was like all right I'll give this a crack I won that and then uh, four weeks later I did another half and I won that and got the course records in both and and then my coach was like okay man I think this is you you know it was literally a fork in the roads. So it was, do I stay in New Zealand? And I would have to go back to the building site because I couldn't pay rent otherwise. Or do I come to Europe and literally have no money, no any, no support network over here and make it work? And like, it was kind of like a weird thing. It was really tough. Like I was, you know, it was like, oh, what am I going to do? And literally I was racing French Grand Prix on the weekends between halves and my French Grand Prix team was paying for like this tiny little apartment that was, three meters by five meters. And then actually it was the Collins Cup then, like that was my, I guess, one big break. It was like 20,000 euros or whatever it was to race at that race, which is just like, I was actually, you know, like choking up when I got the uh, call up for the Collins Cup. Cause it was like, this actually means that I can be comfortable. I can have that security. And then you can kind of build on performing on top of that, you know. After the Collins Cup, I was really at a fork in the roads what to do. I couldn't go back to New Zealand. I wasn't sure where I wanted to be, and so I took a chance and literally got a train ticket to Girona and messaged a few people on the way to Girona and found a place to stay. And, and then actually, yeah, like serendipitously, I bumped into Yarn. I don't usually run really early in the morning, but for some reason this day I woke up super early and walked out the door and headed out running. And, bumped into Jan out running and we just, yeah, kind of had a quick chat about, you know, all the stuff we met at the Collins Cup and all the stuff around that and then we just got along as friends, really. We had an hour run or whatever, just banter and then, yeah, that kind of was like, hey, do you want to come to the pool? And then we ended up kind of, I guess, committing to a little bit of training together. He was racing California, I was racing a half in Spain. Uh, so we just trained together through that time and then, yeah, training together since then. 12 months ago, I wouldn't have predicted that I'd be training with the greatest of all time and learning from what he has to, you know, teach me. Carl Smith is, has done very well for himself, uh, of course, with very limited competition. Uh, uh, then again, you can always only race who's there on the day, but he definitely seems to be the strongest swim biker in the sport at the moment. You could say that the PTO is literally life-changing. that allowed me to then be a full-time athlete and actually be secure in Europe.